we're gonna tackle an issue that has been very controversial among my subscribers and viewers. That's really strong. lovely friends. How are you doing today? Great. Me too. Thanks very much for asking. Today on Becca's Brit Techie vlog, we're going to tackle an issue that has been very controversial among my subscribers and viewers. And that is which tea tastes best to me, at least. I mean, you do you. I've taken all your suggestions and I'm finally gonna find which is my favorite. The control group really is your standard PG tips. This is my daily breakfast tea. I tend to buy the box by the 240. So there's 240 teas in this box, provided I don't forget one steeping on the counter and return 10 minutes later to find that it's gotten up and walked away. This is gonna be tea number one. I'm gonna try to do a blind taste test involving a Sharpie and some labels and these tea bags. It will be sorta of blind, sorta of not, maybe, because I mean, I'm gonna have to see myself making the teas. And some of these are pyramid bags and some of them are traditional bags with strings and whatnot. So we'll see. I'm going to try not to be biased here, but so far my favorite tea has been PG Tips of the like four that I've tried. I have Tetley at work. I do prefer PG Tips to Tetley, so I didn't include Tetley in this taste test. Second, I've got this PG Tips Extra Strong. I want to try this in hopes that maybe it can reduce my steeping time and make me a faster cup of tea because I let mine steep for about five minutes and it just takes forever. So sometimes you're too tired for that in the morning. I'm going to try PG Tips Extra Strong. It's their strongest blend to see whether I like that better than the regular. I've also seen comments that refer to my taste in tea as liking a builders. Well, apparently there's a brand of tea called Builders. I saw this on British Corner Shop and I was like, yeah, I'm going to try that. It's tested and approved by Real builders. I imagine this is like our campfire coffee, like motor oil and boiled socks and you like cook it until it burns and then you just drink it. I say it's strong because like they need, builders need lots of energy to keep going throughout the day, building things and working hard. So maybe this will be my new favorite if it can like jump start my heart in the morning. Most of my viewers have a preference for Yorkshire tea. So I didn't know which kind of Yorkshire tea. So I've got regular Yorkshire red, I guess, I think is what it's called. There are a hundred tea bags. Now Yorkshire tea has a royal warrant, not Her Majesty's royal warrant. This is Charles's royal warrant. Then I also got, because I mean, I'm a little extra anyway, Yorkshire gold which also has the Prince of Wales Royal Warrant. This was supposed to be better than the regular red, right? This is the their favorite sources of tea from Assam, Kenya, and Rwanda. Where's this one from? Oh, just nondescript tea gardens and estates in East Africa and Asia. Oh, it was packed in the United Arab Emirates. So um, surely some are sourced near there. The Yorkshire Gold was blended in the UK, and that's all I see. So they must have imported all of those tea leaves, blended them in the UK on what I imagine is like some sort of gilded sorting factory. I don't know. This tea also has the royal warrant of the Prince of Wales. This is Taylor's of Harrogate. Yorkshire tea, apparently, which I didn't learn until I sat down and started doing this, was looking at these boxes. I mean, the royal warrant is offered to Taylor's of Harrogate. This is Taylor's of Harrogate Yorkshire tea, and this is just Taylor's of Harrogate English breakfast tea. So we're gonna see if there's a difference. I didn't know that these were related when I purchased them, but that's gonna be so, sort of interesting, isn't it? It's a registered trademark of Betty's and Taylor's group LTD, as is Yorkshire tea. So we'll see what the difference is. The Taylor's of Harrogate English breakfast tea says, Oh, they buy the best and blend it to suit local water. Well, we'll see if our water is comparable to that of Yorkshire. But it doesn't say exactly where the tea leaves are from. Bright African and Malty Assam teas. And it's Rainforest certified, as are all of these. So, last but not least, Twinings. Now, this has Her Majesty's 
royal warrant. I wonder, like, when Charles comes over for tea, does she serve him twinings or does she have, like, a special box of Taylors of Harrogate or Yorkshire Gold for Charles? It seems like I read somewhere that the, the Queen prefers Earl Grey, so maybe she has a different source of black tea than Earl Grey and she has twinings Earl Grey and something else for black tea. I don't know. Maybe she doesn't drink black tea. Maybe she just drinks Earl Grey. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a box and I'm going to put a number on the box. Box. Number one, and I'm going to put a number on this label, and I'm going to stick it to the bottom of the cup. Nothing could go wrong with this method. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put the tea bag in so I don't lose track. Pop, and there's the one. Try not to look at the camera like while I'm tasting it so I don't give it away to myself. There's tea number one. Number two, we're going to do the tips extra strong. I love these. My door is open. My kettle is on. Come on over. It's been too long. It has been too long. All right, there's that. We'll do the builders. It's gonna be three. Constructing the perfect brew. Drop a tea bag in a mug or cup. Add water just off the boil. Whistle a tune, a 20 second tune. Longer if you like it really strong. Remove bag and squeeze for extra color. Finally mix in milk and sugar. 20 seconds, is that all it takes? I was planning on letting these steep for like three minutes. These are kind of like Tetley bags. They're round. There's number three. And I have matching mugs. This happens to be the only set of matching mugs that I have that came with my plates that I didn't use until approximately a year and a half ago when I started drinking tea. Next, we're gonna have regular Yorkshire tea. Ah, how cute. Are you two or are you one? Oh, it's like this. It's like interesting. Okay, four. All right, five. Oh, not quite as orderly, but still more orderly than PG Tips. Number five. Number six, Prince Charles's Tailors of Harrogate. They don't tell you exactly which specific product the Royal Warrant is for, just that it goes to this business because this business provides something for the Royal Household. Could be Yorkshire Tea, could be Yorkshire Gold, could be English Breakfast Blend. It could be any of these other advertised flavors. We just know Taylors of Harrogate makes something that Prince Charles has been drinking for at least the last five years. Oh, that looks nice inside. Who knows what I paid for this? Probably an outrageous amount of money for these few tea bags. This one says four to five minutes. So, I mean, I'm just gonna do them all at that. So here is Prince Charles's bag. Rip that off. Uh-oh, I've breached the tea bag. Just try another one. This time I won't be quite so forceful with the princess tea bag. Now it's nice and nondescript. And last but not least, Her Majesty's Twinings Black Tea. So a box like this in the US, I think I paid like five or six bucks for. Big box of the tips is about $20. 300 years of experience. Very similar tea bag to Yorkshire. Ta -da. All right, my tea has steeped for approximately three minutes. I didn't want to go much longer than that. I feel like three is a good baseline. Got my little tea bag squisher, my handy dandy tea bag holder from La Creuset. I'm just going to start pinching bags and hope for the best. I am going to squeeze them. I know sometimes they say not to squeeze them. It's personal preference. I like to squeeze them. I have also mixed up the cups and arrange them in something of a honeycomb formation so that they could all get close access to the boiling water. They're all approximately the same volume. I mean, this is an unscientific study. All right, here's my tower of tea bags. Hot, hot, it's hot. Now I've got my Demerara sugar. Each one is going to get a half a teaspoon of Demerara sugar because I'm not changing my habits to suit tea bags. This is going to be which bag conforms to my already ingrained methods of making tea. Also, I don't want to add more sugar to accommodate a stronger tea because, I mean, if I don't like stronger tea with the amount of sugar I already used, then what's the point of making stronger tea? Trying not to increase my sugar intake too much. I've got seven different spoons to stir the tea because I doubt there would be any cross-contamination. John has assured me in the past that he can tell when his tea has been stirred with a spoon that has stirred something else. So we're gonna avoid any cross-contamination potential and use a separate spoon for each mug. Because you know what? I'm already gonna have to wash all these mugs. Why not wash seven spoons too? We're gonna load up the dishwasher when we're done. Put a dollop of milk in each one. I mean, if I were more 
responsible. I probably would have measured this, but I don't measure it on a daily basis. I just do it by looks. We're gonna let them set for approximately three minutes so that I don't burn my face off when I try and drink them. My tea has rested, I don't know, cooled a bit. Ready to taste it. And to assist me in my taste test, I've got some rich teas. First ones are always broken and those don't count. Is it just me? Am I the only one who opens rich teas and like the top flies off and all the broken biscuits fall out? I'm gonna dunk. It's a good tasting biscuit dunk. I'll try a sip. Mm, it's a bit weak for me. So we're gonna put that on this end of the spectrum. Oh, that's better. It tastes less sweet on the biscuit. To me, rich teas are sweet enough. Like I don't want a sweeter biscuit to dunk in tea. Yeah, it's not bad. Tastes more like tea than the last one. We'll see. I'm gonna put it near the end, but not quite, because it is better than the last one. All right, biscuit dunk. Tasty. That one tastes much more like tea. I mean, it's stronger tea taste, but it's not like a better tea taste, you know what I mean? Put this one this way, but okay. Tastes fine. That's tasty. Like that's a tasty cup of tea. Tastes like tea, but it tastes like good tea. All right, we're gonna put him more toward the front. I'm gonna have to find a way to look at the bottom without spilling all the tea that's left in, and that's gonna be the fun part. It's good with the rich tea. Not quite as good as the last one that I drank. It's a bit milder. I'm gonna put this one between that one and the other strong one. Hmm, I'll probably place this one middle of the road. So I'm gonna put it here, it's not very strong. All right, last but not least, biscuit dunk. That's really strong. Whoo, that is a strong cup of joe. It's just bitter. What did I do? I think it should go next to last. When faced with what's basically a cup of sweetened milk and this very strong tea, I think I'd rather have the very strong tea because at least I'm getting caffeinated. Now it's time for the big reveal. Let's see what's in last place. My least favorite tea of the teas that I tried was number six. Sorry, Taylors of Harrogate, not my favorite cup of tea. It just tasted really bland to me. There wasn't like a whole lot of good tea leaf flavor. This one was number five. What's, what was number five? I know I put sugar in it. Like I'm positive I put sugar in it. It's not a fan. I mean, slightly better than if I, you know, had no tea at all. No, thank you. Next, number four, regular Yorkshire tea. It really wasn't bad. It was just a bit milder, I think, than what I usually prefer. I couldn't taste tea. You know, it just tastes like warm, caffeinated beverage, less tea flavor than the ones for the top. Number seven, who was number seven? Her Majesty's Twinings. So this is like the middle. This is the, the hump tea. Do the hump, the hump. I slightly preferred it to the other, the Yorkshire Red, I guess. Yeah, you taste more of the tea leaves. This was number three is in third place. The Builder's Tea. Builder's Tea is in third place. I mean, I let it steep for three minutes and the box said 20 seconds. So, I mean, you can taste the leaf in that and it doesn't taste burnt like that Yorkshire gold. Second place, number two. Tips, extra strong, more of a tea flavor. Number one is number one. The old standby, my PG Tips. I'm sorry, I just love my tips. And I promise you I didn't know which ones I was tasting because I didn't pay attention when I took the bags out and then I mixed them up again. So sorry y'all, I just love me some tips. If you have a favorite brand of tea, let me know in the section below if you've uncovered the mystery of the difference between Taylor's of Harrogate and Taylor's of Harrogate Yorkshire Gold or Yorkshire Tea. Let me know that too. Maybe my water is just not the same water they have in Yorkshire. East Kentucky Waters is not made for Yorkshire tea. I'm gonna sign off, finish my tea, and I probably have a couple more biscuits. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a little like, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye. Hot, hot, it's hot. Hot, hot, it's hot. Hot, hot, it's hot.